Hello, everybody. My name is Victor Banks from the LMU in Munich. This talk will be about preference-based Bennett algorithm, which is a topic I've been working on very intensively together with Eike Hüllemeyer. So what is the setting in preference-based bandits? Imagine we have m different choice options available, which we equate metaphorically with the arms of slot machines. And for sake of simplicity, we identify each option or arm with a number from 1 to m. Now we can perform an action, which represents an interaction with these arms as follows. We can choose a subset of these arms of a specific size k, and we will call such a subset simply a preselection. And then for this preselection, we observe through an external mechanism the most preferred arm, or what we will call the winner of the preselection. So, for example, from the preselection consisting of the first three arms, we observe that the second arm is the most preferred one because it has metaphorically generated the highest payoff. Now, the question is how is the winner of a specific preselection determined? And what we assume is that there is some unknown probability distribution which describes the underlying feedback mechanism. Now, let us give a real life example for such a preference based Bennett setting. So, let us consider the problem of algorithm selection. In this case, our choice options are the m many algorithms which we have available to solve a specific problem instance. So our action corresponds to the choice of a subset of algorithms which we can run in parallel on our machine. Therefore, the size of the preselection k is simply the number of available cores on our machine. And for a specific problem class such as sub problems, we are only interested in the question whether the problem instance is satisfiable or not. So what we can do is we stop the process of solving the problem instance as soon as one of the algorithms has finished. In this way, our preference-based feedback, namely the winner of the preselection, is the algorithm which has solved the problem first. And here, the assumption of a stochastic feedback mechanism makes perfect sense due to several reasons, and the two most obvious reasons are that the algorithms themselves could be random or the occurrence of the problem instance. So next, let us specify a reasonable probabilistic model for the feedback mechanism. So we have our m many arms rep representing the choice options. And we assume that each of them is associated with a strength parameter theta, each of them living in the positive real numbers. And with this, we further assume that the probability that a specific arm i is the winner of a preselection is proportional to its strength parameter theta. And this is nothing else than the very popular MNL model, yeah, which is a popular choice model, especially in the fields of economics. Now, in one of our works, we were interested in a setting where the feedback is generated by a user. Uh, what we then assumed is that the strength parameter of each arm is decomposable into two terms. One is the latent utility of an arm representing its appeal. The other is the degree of the user's preciseness in making the choice, yeah? so, which we denote by gamma. And why do we call this parameter gamma, the degree of user's preciseness? So if we recall the MNL model from above, and using the representation for the thetas, we see that for the extreme limit cases for gamma, we have that the choice probability will correspond to a uniform distribution on the preselection subset S if gamma goes to zero. And if gamma goes to infinity, then the choice probability is simply the point mass on the arm with the highest latent utility among the preselection. So we see that with a small gamma, we can model an imprecise user who is making the choice more or less uniformly at random. And with a large gamma, we can model a precise user who will likely choose the arm having the highest utility within the preselection. Now, a tempting question in this regard is what is actually a good or even an optimal preselection of arms? 
And for this purpose, let us assume for the time being, we have full knowledge about the underlying utilities of the arms. Then a natural approach to, is to consider the expected utility of a preselection, which is given by the utility of an arm multiplied with the probability of being chosen and this product summed up over all arms in a preselection. Therefore, a preselection is called optimal if it has the maximum expected utility among all admissible preselection. Now, with all these things in mind, we can specify a sequential decision-making process, which we have called the preselection bandits. In this case, now, as before, we have finite number M of choice options or arms. And our goal is to use the optimal preselection as star as often as possible for our preselection. So the interaction between the learner making preselection and the environment or the user making the choices as follows. In each time step T, first, the learner chooses a subset from the available choice options, or in other words, preselects a subset of arms and presents this subset to the user or the environment. And after that, the user or the environment chooses with a specific probability one element of the subset, yeah? picks the most preferred arm, arm among the presented preselection. And this interaction goes on until the high memorizing capital T is reached. In order to specify a meaningful performance measure of the learner, we consider the cumulative regret, which is the cumulative difference of the expected utilities of the optimal preselection and the chosen preselection. And we see that this performance measure is conform to our goal of choosing the optimal preselection as often as possible. Now, of course, our learner does not know what the optimal preselection is and needs to learn it. Uh, the challenge from a learning perspective is that feedback is only provided for the presented preselection but not for preselections which haven't been presented. Because of this, we are facing the so-called exploration-exploitation dilemma underlying each bandit problem, which in our case simply means that on the one hand, we need to exploit our current knowledge about the used preselections in the previous time step, and therefore use preselections which appear to be optimal, while on the other hand, we need also to try out new, new or unexplored preselections, as it might be that in fact we haven't found the optimal preselection so far. Okay, and just to give you a brief overview of our theoretical findings, we have considered the learning problem just introduced in two variants. One where the preselection size is fixed throughout the learning process, and in the other, the preselection size can be determined by the learner in each time step. For both settings, we have shown lower bounds on the cumulative regret for any learner in the respective setting, and we provide for each setting a learning algorithm which is almost optimal regarding its bound on the cumulative regret, respectively. Now, finally, I want to mention a couple of other interesting research questions related to the setting presented here. One is where we incorporate user heterogeneity into the problem setup in the sense that the strength parameter are varying with the user as well. So it's basically a non stationary learning setting. Another interesting setting is given if we incorporate feature information about the arms or the users or both, which is also known as a contextualized learning setting. Finally, what would be also interesting is to consider other choice models than the MNL model, although it's theoretically appealing, yeah, but still for practical reasons a bit too restrictive. Yeah, so it would be interesting to investigate how this MNL model assumption can be relaxed and if learning is still feasible in such cases. So with this, we are at the end of the talklet. So thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to get in touch with you during the conference.